Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of a certified car nut. Well, this week we're in Savannah, Georgia at the Hutchison Island Racetrack for the vintage race portion of the Hilton Head Concord de Elegance and Motoring Festival. Now, this is a multi-day extravaganza culminating in the Concord on Hilton Head on Sunday. But several days before that, there's several days of vintage racing at this newly reopened track. Very cool venue, some really fast cars, like this Lotus 7. Check this baby out. Hey Steve, how you doing man? Great Dennis, great to have you here. What a great day and what a great track. What a cool place this is. Cool place, cool track, cool weather, downtown setting in Savannah. What, what more can you ask for? Well, it, it's a pretty unique setup overall and uh, this is the vintage race portion of the Hilton Head Concord de Elegance and Motoring Festival. And you're with, you're with H, HSR. Correct. So how did you guys come together to, to, to make this happen? Well, this happened a few years ago when the Hilton Head group that was putting on and growing this great Concord they have. Several of the people involved were sports car enthusiasts and mm -hmm. had race cars, so they formed an event at a local racetrack here for a couple of years, and then after doing that once or twice, they had the foresight to think about asking a group who does this on a national basis to bring the show and make it sort of an anchor point to the Concord. And it really seems to have taken off from that point. I mean, you guys have been involved now. This is your third year of involvement? Third year, right, and it's just grown immensely, and it's going to take off even further now that we have this facility and brought back to life. What an interesting facility and what an interesting story. It was built in 96, right. ran one race, one and race, that was it. A, a champ car race, a lot of money invested in here, a lot of community money invested, and it was one of those events that just got askew in terms of the finances, so it just evaporated after that first event. Track went dormant, set for 12 years, and then we got involved and decided what, what can it take to get this back? And we really went at it, and the city and the county and the Weston got behind it, and here it is, back to life. It was about three years to get that done, right? Right. Well, I've also seen just, uh, you know, really a wide, wide array of cars here. I mean, people people seem to be bringing a little bit of everything to this. Yeah, we have cars from the early 50s up to the early 2000s, and a lot in between, a lot of muscle cars from the 60s and 70s, really interesting stuff. Formula 5000, I think you saw earlier. Great cars, yeah, it's, fast it's, cars. Yeah, you have fast cars. I'm having an absolute blast. Everybody that's here racing seems to be doing the same. I would love to get out there myself, but I'll probably have to hotwire a car. What do you say we at least check a few of them out before we have to get too serious? Let's do it. All right. Okay, Larry, so I'm here at the, you know, the Hutch Design. Hutchinson Island track, you know, vintage racing, and there's all sorts of stuff here. I mean, there's Lola's, and there's, you know, there's Ferraris, and there's Porsches and stuff. I'm going along, and I see Buick. I went, Buick! <laughs> yeah, Buick Somerset. It's a tubular chassis car, you know, okay. purposely built race car, but you had to run the factory roof line and actual steel top from an original car. You had to run the deck lid, which was original, and you had to run the tail light. Well, that, you see, I think that's what did it for me. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's that's basically your, you know, that's the Buick you're going to see in the parking lot, you know? That's and that's, that's the full. Full tail light across there. You don't see that on race cars very often. Well, you know, it's it's full race inside, and you got it. Man, you got a lot of stuff going on. You got switches for for everything and more. Are some of those just decoration, or do? No, they're all there for a purpose. All of them are used for certain functions. There's one or two spares, so that if we yeah. have a problem with one, we can Swap it quickly out. switch it back over. But all of them, we got the ignition, the starter, fuel pump, the fans, the transmission coolers, yeah. multiple uh, ignition boxes, and yeah. then we got a wiper when it's raining, defroster, and then another spare major cage here. Yeah, the cage is as built originally. Uh, we've added one or two bars in it for safety and the center bar along the front windshield was what's called the Earnhardt bar uh -huh. in case you, you flip upside down. But uh, otherwise this is how she was built for the series. That's correct. Well, I like, you know, you got a lot of these things listed and some good advice in there. There's bar and hole. Bar you're getting ready hole. to start her up. <laughs> and think and be patient. Yeah, that's something I, I knew that I needed to do and I put on there and 
I very rarely look at it. <laughs> I need to do that more. More often. So what, what powers this baby? Well, this is a 358 General Motors V8. Can we pop the top? Yeah, sure. Yeah, give you a hand here. In this series, they ran two different engines. You could run a V6 or a V8. This uh -huh. is the V8 size that they ran then. Uh, this particular engine was a 18-degree head 358 that was used by Joe Gibbs Racing, and I bought the components and have rebuilt it several what, times. What did it really? <laughs> I mean, is it, does it uh, take a fair amount of attention? Well, you get three or four races out of it, and then you need to go through it. And go through it again. Take it up. How many horsepower? This one's about 660, somewhere in that neighborhood. Wow. Now, this track's only been open for a little while, reopened for a little while. How do you like this? How'd you I like track? it. We were here last year, and uh, this is our second year here, and it's it's a fun track. It's uh, still got a lot of, you know, it doesn't get raced on enough, so it doesn't have a lot of grip like you would like to have yeah. on the track, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, hey, you got the only Buick here. I respect that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming by and seeing us. Thanks for bringing it out, man. Okay. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Paul, this is a whole other approach to vintage racing. This is a, a 72 Datsun 510, right? That's correct. So it's, and it's Datsun. It's, it's not before it was before Nissan. It was yeah. Nissan. Yeah. So th there was actually a whole series built around this category, right? Yes, uh, the 2.5 liter Trans Am series competed in the 70s. And what all have they running that? Uh, we had uh, the Datsuns, of course, and uh, Alfa Romeos and BMWs, uh, small sedans. Paul Newman drove one of these, didn't he? Yes, he did. He started his, uh, his career in one of these cars with Bob Sharp. No kidding. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, you worked for his team for a while. Yes, I did. I worked for Bob Sharp and Paul Newman back in the, uh, in the 80s. That would be a pretty good gig. Excellent gig. <laughs> <laughs> so what about it makes it such a good race car? Uh, it's a good balanced race car, very forgiving. Even I can drive it. Even you can drive Maybe even I could. Well, you know, in, and interior-wise, you've strapped, stripped out everything Datsun, basically, and it's, it's now all business. Yes, just the essentials, the instrumentation, and safety gear else has been removed to lighten the car and uh, you know that, that's all you need you just want low weight and, and, and gauges to tell you what's going on just to get you around the track just to get you on looks like a pretty sturdy roll cage and that's probably a good idea too yeah it makes me feel good <laughs> back here are probably fuel cell fuel cell battery fuel pumps fuel filters so there's not not a lot of 510 left in it other than the, the outside uh, shell but what power is it it's a 2.0 uh, liter L20B, uh, Datsun Racing Division cylinder head, uh, 50 millimeter Makuni carburetors, external oil cooler and filter. But well, that's pretty yeah. much the Datsun engine, right? Apart from that, it's Datsun, yeah. It looks like you've stiffened it up a little bit, but yeah. But otherwise, it's pretty much Datsun. Yes, sir. Wow. And it's, it is a blast to drive, huh? More fun than you can imagine. <laughs> so how do you like this track? I mean, they only opened it back up a couple years ago, I guess. Yeah, it's a very nice track. It's very wide, uh, cambered turns, plenty of room to race. Kind of everything you'd want. Huh? That's what we're here for. <laughs> well, Datsun 510, thanks for bringing it out. Pleasure talking to you. Cool ride. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Randy, this is a beautiful car. This is a 59 Ferrari 250, right? PF Coupe, yes, sir. Uh, 250 PF Coupe. PF Coupe standing for? Pinot Farina. Yeah, it has Pinot a Pinot Farina body on it. Now, this was... Uh, uh, one of Ferrari's first attempts to do kind of a mass produced car, is that That's right? That's correct, it was. Uh -huh. There were 100 of these built for three years, from 58 to uh, 1960. 100 years mass produced? It was for Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> what did it go for back in the day? $12,000. 12 grand in 59? 1959, right. 12 grand in 59, I mean, a caddy was probably about 5,500 bucks. That's right, that's man, a lot of money. Man. Well, this is, I mean, this is a neat car. How long you had it? I've had it uh, around 16 years. Well, you've done, uh, you know, the interior, You've upgraded and modified a little bit. The seats are not original. No, the seats are called uh, Cobra Classic seats. They're yeah. pretty much a duplicate of the Ferrari racing seats from the day. And then the engine turn dash wouldn't have been... That was not original. That's... Somebody did that. All the gauges are original, except for the fuel gauge, because the car has a fuel cell for mm -hmm. safety purposes, so the gauge was replaced. Automatic? Uh, it's a T400. This is the uh, GM T400 automatic, the same one used in Ferrari 400s. Right, the, right. the only automatic car that Ferrari, Ferrari ever, ever did. Ever did. But the real surprise with this car is under the hood. Yeah, absolutely. Let's look at that. Yeah, instead of the V12 Ferrari, 
Am I looking at the heartbeat of America here? You are. You're looking at a small black Chevy. That is, you know, it takes a lot of balls to be doing that to a Ferrari. Well, let me tell you, a lot of people did it back in the day because really? if they blew the motors up, they weren't connected to the factory. It was much cheaper just to drop an American V8. There were some of these done even back in the late 50s. So that was not uncommon? No, it was not. This car still has the original radiator that came with the, the Ferrari V12. And, and you can see the, the motor mounts yeah. where the engine used to go. So much farther forward. This much sets farther, farther forward. Back, back yes, it does. Better weight distribution. Wow. Honest Charlie speed shop on your, uh, your overflow there? From the day. You <laughs> period, period correct. Even the Offenhauser intake manifolds from the day. Now, you you do a lot of this vintage race stuff. Actually, you're, you're associated with uh, HSI. Yes, I am. I'm a tech inspector with historic sports car racing. Man, that's about as much fun as you can have with your clothes on, I think. You got that right. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing it out, Randy. Fantastic car. Pleasure talking to you, as always, Dennis. Well, Mark, I saw you uh, slipping through the paddock here on your way out to one of the runs, and this thing, it just it just seems to slide through the atmosphere. I mean, it's, with all the skirting and everything, this is a slick-looking little car. What is it? It's a, it's a Sports 2000 purpose-built race car developed for, for club racing. And uh, the idea was that uh, in the manufacturers, you'd adhere to very similar specifications, have slightly different aerodynamics in the body styling. So it's a driver against driver. But everything else, like series. the engine size and the brake size. And engine so it's really, size, it brakes, driver tires, driver. Driver, pretty much driver against driver. So it's a, a, a 2000 series, a two liter engine? Uh, two liter engines, that's right. Uh, Ford Pinto engine. That's right. Ford, <laughs> Ford two Pinto? liter Pinto engine. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yep. Nothing, well, no. all stock. Nothing, nothing wow. fancy about it. What? That's amazing. Now, I mean, this, therefore, it's not real powerful. No, it's de like it develops about 140 to 145 horsepower. So um, what's the trick to racing this? Uh, keeping your foot on the gas. Really? Yeah. I mean, you've got to get it up there and keep it up stay, there, right? Stay on the gas and use the brakes just to transfer weight and grip. Yeah. Because if you lose momentum, it takes you a while to gain You're it back. Very eh? hard to get back. Wow. Well, I mean, it's a great looking car and I can't believe it's Pinto powered. I mean, I, well, I can't believe it. Can we look at it? Take, take the back <laughs> Let's off. Take Let's take it back off this. and you'll see it. Just uh, lift up and back, just eh? Lift up and back. Yeah. Light enough. Get far enough away. There you That's go. a Pinto. Yep. <laughs> when people learn that it's Pinto powered, I mean, how, how do they react to that? <laughs> well, a lot of the stock cars today, uh, dirt track cars, use this. Oh, really? And they blew it up to about two or three hundred horsepower, which you can oh, do wow. when you put cams on these. Yeah, things. yeah. Yeah, but this is just just normal stuff. Well, it's, it's such a great looking car, and how does this car? like the Hutchinson Island track. Turn one is, uh, is a struggle because you're going as fast as you can and there are concrete walls in I front of you. I saw those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, don't, don't hit those. You've got a really cool, slippery car here, an 84 Royale. Royale RP40. Well, it's RP38, now it's an RP42. RP yep. Very cool. Thank you. Pintos forever. Pintos forever. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to My Classic Car. Dudley, this is that's a cool looking car. Thank you. This is a it's a it's a Lola, right? It's a 1973 Lola T332 Formula 5000 car built for a spec series from 1968 through about 1976. The Formula 5000 series is, is a five liter series, right? Yes. So what's the engine? This is a Chevy. Um, there were other motors that we used, but everything had to fall within the uh, five liter maximum. So it's a 302? It's a 302 with a five speed and uh, of course disc brakes and everything all around. What's the injection system? This is a Tacalmet injection system with a Lucas fuel, medium, fuel metering system. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh. How does that work? Um, Let's put it this way, we don't want to drive it on the highway very far because <laughs> even with 20 gallons of gasoline, you're not going very far. Is it fun on this track? So far, it's been great. The sweeping turn one complex to turn two is incredible in this because it has such good road holding capability and my neck is not capable of handling the G-loads. <laughs> wow. Well, and I just, I think it's great. I saw it earlier today and I said, I, I got to track you down. This thing's just too cool. And 1973, I mean, it's a piece of history here. Yes, very much so. Wow. This, as I say, this car won the Tasman Championship. Um, Warwick Brown raced it in 1974 and his best finish was Riverside and where he's turned in third uh, to Brian Redman. Well, man, I'm glad you brought it out. I'm glad you race it and I hope you do well here. Oh, it's been fun. All right. Thank you. <laughs> 
Oh man, we had a blast at the vintage races here in Savannah, Georgia. And remember, this is just one element of the four-day extravaganza that is the Hilton Head Concord d'Eleganza Motoring Festival. This whole thing is really cool. Check it out.